I can start the day, but dog, I, I really, I got to get this from my mama. Don't get this, she knows me, man. So you know, I'm, 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 I'm trying to sun go down. Sun go down. About the sunset. I'm just waiting for sunset. I know, I know now. Thirty-seven o'clock, right? I don't go by the times no more. I go by when the sunset. When the sun go down, right? Yeah. But you know, around that time. But I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna come, come back again. They hate that the prophets are back teaching our people the truth. We are the Israelites according to the Bible. That's right. That is who we are. You know why men, black men kill each other? Because they don't see each other as Jesus Christ. We are Israelites on the time of the Jews. Let's go to Hebrews uh, 7 and 14. Question. You, what you mentioned was that. What's your name, bro? Cornell. Cornell. We Israel united in Christ, right? You mentioned something heavy. You mentioned that all of that stuff could have been avoided. That situation with the brother, right? How does that? Let me ask you a question. Who is who in our community is going to take charge and start teaching our brothers the right way to go and start being that example to our brothers? It, 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 it got to, it got to start from somewhere. I don't know what it, 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 it can start from me. Let me do chapter 7, verse 31. But you're going to understand what we've seen out here today is something that we, we rarely see. We've seen a bunch of middle to young black men standing here listening to the word of God. Right. We rarely see that during one, one teaching session where you see four or five different black men plus black men over there. That shows that the black men are in this community, right? right. But what's going on in this community? Get that in loop. Luke chapter 7 verse 31 Look it out. And the Lord said Where to then shall I liken the men of this generation So the, so the Lord said Where unto then shall he liken the men of this generation The so called black Hispanic and Native American men The children of Israel you, do, you know what, do you know what Judah means? Do you know what Israel means? So to say that you're an Israelite That means that you're a prince that has power with God right. To say that you're an Israelite from the tribe of Judah means that you are God's praise. Right. But bigger than that, as a as a man of the Lord, you're commanded to be a leader. You're commanded to be a pillar. You're commanded to be the one that's teaching our people the right way to go, like the officer was bringing out about that Leviticus 19. We're going to get back to that in a second. But read how the Most High and Christ views the men of our generation today. Read that again. And the Lord said, Where to then shall I liken the men of this generation? Uh huh. And to what are they like? Let me ask, I'm gonna ask you to answer that question, Corn. You said Cornell, right? What are the men of our generation like? Before Christ gave you the answer, what what do you say the men of our generation is like? Oh, I see. They're like crabs in a bucket. Crabs in a bucket, right? Are they really men? No. They, they're really Uncle Tom's, man. Uncle Tom's? Uncle Let me Tom. show you what Christ calls them. Read. Verse 32. They are like unto children. They are like unto what? Until children, children handle their issues. You have children. When when they when someone takes your child's toy, what's their first reaction? They go to run out of toy. They go run out and try to take. Hey, they got my toy, mommy. They go crazy, right? Their first reaction is something emotional. It's something hostile, right? Look it out. But Christ says that. Read that again. They are like until children sitting in the marketplace, right? But Christ calls us children in the marketplace. Read. They are like children sitting in the marketplace uh -huh. and calling one to another and saying, we have piped unto you and ye have not danced. Right. So their whole deal is for you to be just like them. Our men, you want to go sleep with the next sister? Hey, bro, go holler at that sister. You want to go kill that? Hey, bro, go kill that nigga. You want to do anything? Our brothers, our men are... We, we basically we teach each other to do the wrong thing right, but right. what are we supposed to do now though give me that in second address chapter 10 verse 34 verse 34 which says stand up most high is telling us men that's why it's important that you're standing here because you must know your role the, the issue with our community it starts with the so called black hispanic and native american man first verse 34 read that stand up Second Ezra, chapter 10, 
Verse 33. And he said unto me, Stand up manfully. He said what? Stand up manfully. Go ahead. And I will advise thee. Mm -hmm. Then said I. So he said, Stand up manfully, and the Most High will advise you. You have your teachers out here now giving you the word of God to advise you on the right way to walk now. Right. And how are we supposed to walk in 1 Kings chapter 8? What you must understand is that in this, this Bible here is your history book. It's a basic, it's basic instructions before leaving earth type of deal, right? But it's instructions for you to come back into your role as a man, right. as a father, as a husband. And as a leader of your community, in order to stop this thing and to guide the younger men the right way to go. Right. You understand that? Get that First Kings 2. First Kings 2, I'm sorry. What did King David tell Solomon to do? It's the same thing Christ is, is speaking through us, telling our men to do today. Read that. First Kings, chapter 2, verse 2. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I go the way of all the earth. Uh -huh. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. So now he's telling you to show yourself a man. Our men need to start showing themselves as men, not as baby fathers, not as gangbangers, not as murderers, not as drug addicts, not as drunkards, right? Not as um unemployed video game playing niggas right. Right. that don't take care of their family, can care less about their seed, their offspring, their wife, nothing. If they, they don't care about their community. Yeah. They're going to come out here and march today after another brother's been killed with absolutely no solutions in hand. No. All they're going to say is we need to get together and stop the violence. Right. No, there's a, our men first need to be a man. Right. First, and this is how we do that thing. Read. I go the way of all the earth. Uh -huh. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. It says show yourself a man. Cornell, read. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God. It's to keep the charge of the Lord thy God. That's how we become men. So what is, read on. To walk in his ways. To walk in his ways, read. To keep his statutes. To keep the Most High God's statutes, read. And his commandments. And his commandments. Now let's get back to the commandment that the officer was bringing out. You come up in a little, in a second. Let's get back to the commandment that we that you had a question about, Cornell. Right? Let's get Leviticus 19. Now, do you understand? Matter of fact, get Ezekiel 34 and 31st. You must understand who the Most High is dealing with as well, black man. He's not dealing with the sisters on the same level that he's dealing with you. The officer brought out the divine order. It's God, Christ, man, then women, children, everything else. You have a direct relationship with Christ. He's dealing with you first. But in order for our community to step back up, you have to take your rightful place first. That's why you see us out here now. Right. You don't see no women out here. You see repented, formerly known as black men, walking here and showing our brothers the right way to go so that they can get over here and, and join the walk with us yep. so that we can take back our community read ezekiel chapter 34 verse 31 Bring it up. Up. and ye my flock it says ye my flock the most high god's flock is what the flock of my pasture are men they are what are men no they're children are men they're women all men, the flock of the Most High God's pasture are men. Yeah, that's right. You understand that? So this is now go back. Now, how do you show yourself a man? Just in this instance, you taking off your hat in honor of your head is showing yourself a man, right? You're not too ashamed because guess what? When you got to go to court and they tell you to, to take your hat off, you do that in in reverence to who? The so-called white man. Right. Right. Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. so-called black man we're dealing with the black messiah jesus christ right. that's who we show reverence to read that now leviticus 19. Yeah. leviticus chapter 19 verse 17. Right. thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart so part of being a man is not showing hatred towards your brother in your heart right but how are we doing that now 
mentioned, you mentioned somebody could have stopped what happened the other day. We're showing you, the Bible is showing you that instead of acting, acting out your situation as a child, you must stand up and be a man now, Cor right. Cornell. Let me show you what Christ said, because Christ comes in a volume of the book. Read. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. It should have been some kind of correction come forth. Before the issue even happened, you knew they was at odds. Somebody knew they had odds. There had to be a man that gained, garnered respect from them young men at, at a young age to say, hey, bro, that's not how you handle this thing. Let that thing go. Right. The that's Bible tells you you're not supposed to hate your brother. You're not supposed to kill your brother. A man do that. People are always going to do that. But guess what? It stops that that particular brother may not have done it. The same way all of us up here may have done that before, but we're not doing it now. Right. right. You understand that? So no, everybody's not going to change, but a leader is going to make sure you pull the ones out that are ordained to and that want to change. That's right. But how are you going to know that until you apply that thing? Right. Read that again. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt any wise rebuke thy neighbor. So part of being a man is rebuking your neighbor, your brother. That's the problem. We don't have men that look like us, that come up like us, to show us the right way to go. Right. That's the problem. We don't even understand who our neighbor is. Read that again. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Go ahead. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. To do what? And not suffer sin upon him. To not suffer sin upon that man. You understand? You were told to take your hat off today because it'll be a sin for you to listen to the word of God with, with your hat on your head without paying homage to Christ. That's love. Right. If we hated you, we wouldn't tell you those things. Right. If we hated you, the officer wouldn't have went over the Sabbath day and how you're not supposed to buy and sell before that brother walked in the store. Hatred would have been like, just go ahead and do what you want to do. Read on. Thou shalt any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer so sin upon him. There's no rebuking going on in our community. You understand that? And that's why here in Bowman South, the population is less than a thousand here, right? And I'm going to tell you, God, pardon yourself, man. I'm going to go in that store, man, but I'm going to repent, man, because I just learned, man. I could leave straight because, you know, I got to get my daughter and everything. So, you know, I ain't perfect. Ain't nobody, nobody is perfect. Nobody. It is said in the Bible, we, we is not perfect. So I know I came here today, but I learned. And right. I promise you, next Saturday, I will not be buying that. No you know better. Why not I know today? better. I'm going to wait till the sunset. Exactly. That's what you're supposed well, to be right. doing. I'm going to do that. Let's too. finish that verse off, though, and I'm going to let you come back up, boss. Finish that verse. Verse 18. Verse, the, the next verse, 19. Verse. Seven, three, eight. Verse 18, thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. If that, if a man came up and told that brother, look, you're not supposed to hold any grudge against the children, against your own brother. Moses left Egypt because he was looking out for one of his brothers. A brother from another nation came and tried to kill, kill um, one of Moses' brothers, and Moses put the dude to death. He's like, look, he defended his brothers though against the other nations. Right. A leader, now I'm not telling you to go kill the other nations, right? But I'm telling you, your job is to make sure that you are defending your brothers by showing them the right way to go. Somebody got to do it. I can do it. Somebody, there's nobody do from do Bowman doing it, but guess what? It can start with you. It starts with one right. person. There was nobody in Columbia. It started with somebody. Right. There was no one in Charlotte. It started with somebody. There's no one in New York. It started, this movement starts with that soul that is ordained to wake up in that community to start walking the right way and start teaching the right things. Right. It starts with one and then it'll then it'll spread. Right. Finish. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. Go ahead. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The reason why that brother went and the reason why we kill each other today is because we have self-hatred anyway. Right. And it right. stems from that image right there. Right. That false image of Jesus Christ. They, they told some slaves, you whip their backs, you tortured them, you put their women to death, you put their men to death, you called the men boys after you after you destroyed them mentally. Started that gay stuff. Started that homosexual nonsense and right. bring it. They try to bring that now in our community. Who's gonna stand up against the gay agenda against our men today in our community? Right. Somebody gotta stand up. Right. Or every single person here is gonna be gay. You think the Bible says that? You think the Bible said that if, if somebody doesn't stand up, the most I ain't leave one person, a small remnant. You see what he did, Solomon? He burned it up. He, he, Solomon and Gomorrah, right? He burnt that whole because there wasn't. It was, no, it was no structure. It wasn't no, there wasn't, it wasn't God's no laws wasn't in it. But he did save a couple he of people, couple. right? 
He saved Lot and his daughters. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Get that real quick. And then I'm going to let officer come up. Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 9. Uh -huh. Bring it out. And so the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant. He says, except the Lord of hosts left us a small remnant. So you may be the only person here that believes in this word here. If you wasn't here, that small remnant, that small remnant is us brothers right here. Right, right. Everybody ain't behind us, but I promise you, you go to that march or whatever, there's going to be thousands of people crowded around a Christian pastor. Right. Right. That small remnant is brothers that's going to stand up and be men and stand up for the Most High God's laws, statutes, and commandments. Yeah, right, and understand what God has yeah. put you on this earth to be. You know? Read. We should have been at Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. If the Most High God didn't leave a small remnant of men here and believers here, we would all be homosexuals. We would right. all and end up with the same result as Sodom and Gomorrah, which was what? Burnt to ashes, right? So our job is to stand up. It's your job now. You understand? You hear this word? Don't make that thing go and void. I won't. Don't make it go void, bro. I got Come on. Daughter, though, man. I want to meet you. I want to shake all. We used to scream "Black Power" while heroin was pushed, but at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark We on Paul's mission We out on the road Purple and gold From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana Sierra Leone 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how men repented at heart the scriptures is proof, IUIC, we deliver the truth.